Today is about single leg deadlifts. Now I like single leg deadlifts because they're a single leg hamstring and knee control exercise with a little bit of bias to the glute and the hamstring and the posterior chain. And hey, we are human, we walk on one leg at a time. So if you're doing two-legged Romanian deadlifts or any sort of deadlifts, you should also be doing single leg deadlifts, especially if you play sport. And I'm gonna show you how to do them correctly today as well as how to modify ones for different weights and loads and how to improve it or advance it by adding in stability and a bit of progression. So today's one, single leg deadlift. Now, I always start with a weight because with this exercise, it's a little bit hard to do without a weight, which is interesting. But the weight will give you a bit of counterbalance, helps you center a little bit more. So don't be afraid to pick up a weight no matter what size it is. Even if it's, you know, two kilos, at least something to trick your brain a little bit to, to try and balance a little bit more because it is a balancing exercise just as much as a strengthening exercise. So if you think about a normal deadlift, as in normal, I mean hamstring, Romanian deadlift, okay, knees bending but not going forward, otherwise you turn into a squat. So hips hinging, going backwards, lower back flat. Pretty easy mechanics once you practice it. When you're doing it single leg, okay, you are going to do opposite weight to the leg. So if I'm doing my right leg, the weight's in the left hand, okay? This arm I use as a counterbalance. So get that one out straight, standing on one leg. You always start with a bit of soft knee here, okay? Soft in the knee, hand out straight, okay? Now from there, what you want to do is think about the weight going straight down and your leg kicking back. So as the weight goes down, your leg kicks back. Now that's going to automatically hinge you at the hip, okay? Now you can see I have to balance there a little bit because there is a bit of foot control in it as well. Now if you're a pronate, it's going to be a little bit harder. You're going to have to work a little bit harder up in the glute. You're going to have to work a bit harder in your foot, all right? And if you are a pronate, you've probably got a little bit of a weak arch. There might be something you have to work on as well. But if you are doing this sort of thing and rounding, Okay, that's a no-no. You've got to try and keep that lower back straight. So as much as you are dropping the weight down, your hips have to go backwards. So everything happens at once. Weight goes down, hips go back, back leg goes back. Okay, arm out straight. So let's try that again. Soft at the knee, leg goes back, weight goes down, hips go back. I'm bending at my knee. Keep going. Keep going so you'd be about that much off the ground. This leg should be out straight-ish. And then you, when you come back up, it's from the posterior chain. So it's all a little bit of back, but mostly glute, hamstring, down through the back of the leg to hoist you back up again. Make sure, though, you don't overcook it. So don't, when you come down and you've got this nice, beautiful form and your leg's out straight here, your back's nice and flat. When you come up, don't overcook it into extension, okay? It's not a back extension exercise. It's a hip extension, hip hinging exercise. Now, a few tips on single leg. When you're on that single leg, two things you've got to think about. Don't let the knee crash inwards, all right? Knee crashing, is that's the whole point of this exercise is to try and control that knee, stop it crashing, so we get better form, we get better stacking up on that knee, and we can try and access that sort of correct movement so when we land on that knee, that knee's not gonna roll in. When you come down as well, this hip here, I want you to try and keep it level. So when you're dropping that way, you can't drop that way. Now, you'll be able to see yourself if you do that. If you, have a, if you put yourself in a mirror, in front of a mirror, you'll see your leg crossing over. If your leg crosses over behind you, that means you're dropping your hip down. Because sometimes it's hard to see what your hips are doing pelvis, if you like. So when you come to this point, you can't do that. You've got to keep it up level. And if your leg is out like that, you're pretty much going to be on the right track. And then all you've got to worry about is that knee. And sometimes you get a little bit of wobble there. That's okay. You're just trying to improve how well you can control that knee and you're going to feel it in the glute. Now, we're using glute maxillus, we're using hamstrings, but this exercise really targets a bit more glute need because you're working on hip stability when you go into that movement there. And that's when we really need it. As humans, when we walk, we need hip stability in that plane there, okay, when we go forward. 
right? Not necessarily as much sideways. We need it when we go forward to control the hip, which helps control the knee. So there's your deadlift. Now, alternative to that, I like using a band. Now this is actually quite good. If you've got, if your weights are too heavy, use a power band. The power band, the beauty about this one, it helps actually guide you down. So it's a good one. I like using it for normal deadlifts. So when we do, when we do a normal hamstring, two leg deadlifts, I use it like that. Pretend like this is a bar. So you can do the same thing with a single as it helps control you directly down to your foot. But also when you're at the bottom, it slackens off, like the weight slackens off, which is a little bit easier. So if you're down there a bit vulnerable, your ham say you're recovering from a hamstring tear and you're a bit vulnerable in that lengthened position, the load is less. When you're up in a shortened position but, and you're you know, in this vertical position where you're neutral and you're stacked, that is a, you know, it's harder on the hamstring, it's tight on the band, but you're in a more safe position. So with this one, you're gonna have to actually come down quite a bit, right down into here, and grab that down there, right? Because when you come down into that deadlift, the band's gonna slacken off. You don't want it too loose at the bottom. So try and gear it up so you're grabbing quite far down, like that, single band, same movement. Let it pull you down to there, and then come back up. Now you notice, I haven't got my arm out, okay? Because all my balance is situated in there, okay? So it's a little bit different to having a weight on one side and hand out that way. So the weight on one side, hand out, that's gonna do a lot more balance work. This is gonna be almost like a bit of a regression. We call it an alternative, but it is a slight regression because the weight gets less on the way down and it's not as unstable for you, okay? So if you're one of those people that struggles initially with the kettlebell, try the band, it might be a good alternative. But if you're a superhero and you can do the kettlebell, you can do the band, piece of cake, your balance is absolutely fine. Jump onto something wobbly. Now, with the BOSU, here, this is one way we can add stability, all right? So this way here, one, you're gonna to have to get good at being on a BOSU. So if you stand on that and you're all over the shop, I wouldn't recommend that you try and do a deadlift on top of that. You've got to get good at that first. It might just be a neuromuscular issue that you've got going on there. Now we use these a lot for ankle rehab, okay? But you can also use it for knee rehab, especially at a single leg deadlift. So same rules, into here, out there. So my stability component is coming from the floor. I'm gonna try and control that proximally. So it makes my hip and my knee work a little bit harder controlling that movement, controlling that balance into there. Now you can see I'm struggling a little bit because it takes a few repetitions to work out how to counteract and not compensate too much. All right, so again, you can use that for knee, hip, hamstring, also ankle if you want to. There's a good progression. Now, that's one way of stability. The other way of stability is what we do is use the band again, but we tie it up to something. So this is where we're trying to challenge the knee control. So that was a wobbly surface. Now we've got to go back to a stable surface. And I'm going to challenge what my knee is doing. Now, I'll show you this way. I'll show you my left leg. Now, you're going to control it that way. Just like you do with a physio lounge or a step down, you're going to try and control or use this band as trying to improve how well you control that knee. So if I'm standing on my leg, how about I grab a weight? Okay, remember opposite hand, opposite leg into there. Now the trick is get that band so maybe a bit in front of you so you're not going to hit it with this leg and you're going to hit it with this weight. Hand out here, standing on one leg. Now the band's trying to pull me inwards. I've got to try and fight that and then work on my single leg hamstring deadlift like that. Okay, I have to think a lot more now. I'm really thinking about what I have to do with this and I have to go a little bit slower, wait till I'm a bit more balanced and then come down and control it. I feel like that knee pulling in and make sure I'm trying to work on that. Now, you may find that band's a little bit too hard. You might have to go down to a, like a normal thera band or even a, a really skinny power band because if the pull was too much, it's just gonna pull your knee in. You're actually gonna compensate and over 
move your body weight over, which is not really the idea. The idea is to try and maintain a normal alignment without compensating, but still control that movement of the knee. So there's your progressions, regressions, stability exercises for the single leg deadlift. I recommend that you try and do single leg work in your workouts, not just double leg, because hey, you're human. All right, see you next time.